Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone welcome back to online course on structure form and architecture the synergy today we are at lecture number 21 and it will be on of uh, frame structure so far whatever we have discussed we have seen the advantages of load bearing structure and also uh, we discussed about the limitation of load bearing structure regarding the span regarding the height of the building and also uh, we discuss something on the temporary structures that to support it but in order to overcome the shortcomings of load bearing structure, uh, say for example, having a greater span to cover uh, reaching to higher heights of the building uh, to be developed. So, frame structure actually uh, help us to make that. So, let us start uh, this discussion on frame structure. Now, frame structure what it says like a frame structure is a structure having combination of structural components like beam, column and slab connected together to resist against the gravity load which is basically also referred as the axial load uh, you know which is acting vertically like transferring from slab to beam, beam to uh, column and then column to foundation and to soil. Along with that uh, the joint of beam and column and slab will also protect the building from the lateral loads like the wind loads that we have discussed earlier. So, here it says about that it is a combination of the structural component. Compared to the load bearing structure there we have seen that load is basically carried by the wall. So, wall and then we have the slab. So, there is no such uh, combination of beam and wall. So, in comparison to that now the structure has uh, you know three components major three components slab beam and column. So, column will be taking the vertical loads. Now, it says also the capable to overcome large forces as because now in the frame structure we will go for the uh, like either steel or maybe the reinforced uh, concrete uh, the concrete mixed with the proper uh, rebars or reinforcement bar of steel. So, which will ok. So, which will uh, basically make your structure more resistance towards the load. The imposed loads on slab transfer through the beam and column to the foundation that already I mentioned. So, here if you see uh, a typical uh, schematic of the frame structure though I have shown you the wall, uh, but these are not the load bearing wall. So, they are just used to protect your interior. Uh, from the outside environment. So, basically the loads imposed on that the dead load, live load all kind of loads is transfer uh, from your beam to column. So, say for example, this is the slab I uh, just put some load on it. So, this will be transferred to the beam first then beam will transfer to the column, column will transfer it to the lower floor and finally, it will reach to the foundation footing and that transmit the load to the soil. So, in this case column act as a vertical load bearing member compared to load bearing structure where wall was the vertical load bearing member and slab and beam acts as horizontal load bearing member for this case. So, in this uh, case the load transfer the live load dead load uh, that will transfer to the slab or sometimes we refer at uh, refer this as floor to the beam, beam to the column and then foundation. Now, this is something what uh, we are talking about the frame structure here you can see that there is no wall being constructed as of now. This is some under construction building I have shown this picture earlier also like here uh, like it is just a frame or sometime we also call it the skeleton uh, structure. So, in the skeletal structure you can find that arrangement of your beam and column. 
So, after that so essentially all the load will be uh, taken care of by this beam and column structure, the load of the slab and the other uh, you know furnitures, then the moving elements, so dead and live loads both will be taken care of by that. And in order to create a more uh, you know uh, partition and function, we can also use the wall uh, at the later stage. And as because this wall will not essentially carry any load, we can reduce the thickness of the wall. Where the load bearing structure, the wall thickness is uh, one and half brick or maybe even sometimes it is gone up to say uh, one meter, uh, three more than three feet uh, thickness and that will also have limitation to go up to say a 4 story building or 5 story. In some exceptional cases, it may went up to even 16 story that uh, we discussed in that presentation. But in general, uh, with this frame structure, we can go even more story. So, 20 to 30 story we can go uh, and definitely there will be again the shortcoming when you go beyond that then along with your gravity load there will be you know more pressure on the lateral load. So, wind pressure will be more and that is why like we have to add something extra some component extra to the frame structure to make the uh, make it solid. Now, these are other uh, two pictures that is showing the frame structure is basically like you can only see the beam column arrangement and then based on the requirement, based on the opening to be created, we create solid and void uh, you know combination with your wall. So, thickness of the wall for external normally taken as uh, like your 10 inch one full brick uh, thickness for internal partition wall like we can reduce up to uh, like 5 inch or sometimes even 3 inch wall uh, which was not possible for the load bearing structure. Now, so far the material is concerned, we can use the uh, RCC reinforced cement concrete uh, if to make this frame structure. We can use the steel frame and we can join them together to create it. Nowadays also it is very common to have the frame structure with the steel and the glass being used or some other uh, light uh, weight material being used for making those partition and the opening and sometimes we can also go for some composite material, uh, some advanced material to make this frame. Now, the components of the frame structure as we discussed already that we will have the slab, uh, then you have the beam uh, and then the column and then the footing and foundation at the uh, lower level uh, like in the underground structure. So, the superstructure is combination of the slab, beam and column and load transfer is basically through this. The axial load, the uh, horizontal load will be taken by the beam and then you know, partially with uh, the column as well. Now, coming to the frame structure, uh, the type. Uh, so, basically based on the joint, how they are actually combined together, how they are connected to the footing. Based on that, we have majorly uh, rigid frame structure and brace frame structures. So, bracing or uh, here the brace frames come from the bracing that we earlier discussed also like uh, in order to overcome uh, or resist the lateral load like wind load and all sometimes we uh, connect uh, your frame with some diagonal member. So, which will make it more rigid, uh, which will make it more resistance, uh, resistant against those kind of load. So, this bracing will help us to protect against that. Even this uh, bracing will help uh, during the you know unwanted movement or very irregular movement during seismic activity if some earthquake happens during that time the vibration uh, uh, like very frequent and uh, with different scale different magnitude vibration. So, that will be taken with that uh, along with the dampers. So, we will come to that uh, during the due discussion. So, in the rigid frame joint, uh, the joint may be of pin joint and it may be the fixed ended joint. So, pin joint that uh, the representation of that is something like that and the fixed joint that we already discussed when you discuss the different support 
of a structural system. Uh, there we discussed uh, this in detail like uh, what is the pin joint and what is the fixed joint. So, in this case rigid structure having columns and beams made monolithically means as if it is a single structure and acting together to tolerate the moments created due to the imposed load on structure, rigid frame structure via the moment shear and tension very effectively. So, in this case uh, like you have uh, three different forces acting, one is your moment um, like uh, when uh, we see that there is a pressure and that will create a couple, so uh, that will create the moment. So, it may be your uh, like clockwise or anticlockwise moment, then the shear is definitely we discussed that uh, sometimes uh, due to inadequacy of your uh, reinforcement bar or something. So, then there will be some force which is acting in opposite direction and there will be uh, failure in shear and the torsion is the twisting uh, activity, especially for the high rise building uh, due to the wind pattern with the dragging effect the positive and negative uh, you know uh, force that will make it. Compared to that the braced frame structure is the structure bracing are commonly provided between columns and beams that already I have shown here, we will have some pictures uh, there and then the resistance of the sideway forces or the lateral forces. So, the previous one uh, where the rigid frames and other uh, combinations we uh, mentioned. So, basically that will take care of the gravity load. So, uh, due to the gravity load whatever uh, the things happen they will be taken care of and this is basically taking care of the lateral load. The frame system offers uh, like basically this kind of frame system offer more effectiveness during uh, the wind force and the earthquake that already mentioned that along with the frame structure beam column connection. If we can connect this diagonally with bracing then uh, that will make it more resistance uh, towards uh, your protecting your building um, from lateral load that is wind load or during the movement the vibration during the earthquake. Now, um, in brace frame structure then uh, also we have these uh, gabel frames and portal frames. So, frames uh, will uh, have something like where uh, instead of the joint this is uh, acting as a single uh, portal, uh, we will discuss this uh, in subsequent slide. So, before we go into discuss that. Uh, let us just uh, go through some of the examples. So, this is some famous building and Bujal Arab in Dubai. So, uh, this is uh, really a very good building, we appreciate it, but basically if you see the structure, it is developed on the rigid frame structure. Uh, the same kind of thing like when you uh, not go for this kind of uh, you know hotel buildings in Bujal Arab or so. So, this kind of office towers being also be constructed with the frame structure where it is very simple form uh, that state uh, you know uh, frame. So, the combination of your beam and column is making the whole skeleton and we can actually use the space more efficiently. Now, come to the pin ended joint uh, rigid frame structure. So, a pin ended rigid frame system commonly has pin as their support condition. So, here if you see that uh, in this portion they are joined with this. If this support uh, pin is removed, so that will be uh, considered as non rigid. So, the support condition removed uh, means it will be non rigid structure and come to the fixed ended. So, here you can see that uh, that particular representation of the structure has changed. So, now it is shown like it is fixed end. So, in this kind of rigid frame uh, system end condition are generally fixed uh, not the pin one. So, uh, coming to the brace frame structure. So, in this case along with the frame uh, we have some structural bracing. So, you can see that uh, this building or this building you have some vertical structure along with that those are connected with some additional bracing which will help this building to protect against the lateral load. 
Now, uh, so as true like when we discussed about this uh, brace frame, so here this is another structure, the earlier structure again uh, it is very straight forward, uh, very enclosed form. So, here it is something like where you can get those members very clearly that how they are connected. So, this particular frame if you uh, just uh, uh, visualize this, so this is connected those beam and column they are connected with the diagonal. So, this diagonal connection it may be uh, like one sided, it may be of two sided like this to make more like in this uh, picture we have this or else it may be something uh, eccentric, it may be of like uh, K type. So, different kind of bracing um, can be used to uh, you know protect it. So, uh, we will discuss those kind of bracing and their advantages in detail when we discussed about the high rise structure. Because you know as we mentioned that there are some advantages of the frame structure to go a uh, little uh, high in height, but after certain 30, 30 story or 40 story building depending on the location and other constant. So, uh, we will be using some different kind of bracing structure and uh, in for high rise we will move to the tubular structure then brace tube structures, truss in structure. So, these are uh, something which will be required for the high rise building, but for the frame structure in order to protect it we like protect from the lateral force acting on it we can go for this kind of bracing. Now, brace frame structure the gabel framed in this case if you see that uh, the gabel thing where you have a ridge. So, the member this particular uh, frame we have uh, little bit height. So, gabel frame structure have a peak at their top. So, here you can see that how it is connected and at the same time in order to protect it from the lateral force you can identify here easily that these are actually braced with the members. These frame systems are used to create pitch roof in place of where now you have the heavy rainfall and uh, the snowfall. So, the basic reason is that like when we discussed about different types of force uh, acting on a building, uh, different kind of loads acting on a building. So, we discussed about the snow road and the rain load. So, for that it is always advisable that you should have a pitch roof or the slant roof where like uh, the rain can easily drain off uh, and it can be uh, connected with the gutter and can uh, be easily taken off from the surface. Otherwise, uh, if you go for the flat, so due to some failure of uh, the rainwater passage or something like that. So, in that case uh, like there will be some additional load of this. So, it is advisable and that is why in uh, the country where like snowfall is very common most of the buildings you will find that they will have this pitch roof. And this kind of frame uh, structure this portal structure not only helping you during this you know heavy rainfall or so fall, but also you can see that that can create uh, the uh, longer span compared to the other uh, load bearing structure or typical uh, frame structure with the beam column combination. And here uh, the steel being used to make the portal, so that like you can also reduce the cross section uh, of uh, those columns. As we discussed earlier also how to improve the section like as because you know in a regular rectangular section the main build, bending stress developed at the outer uh, surface. So, so, that we can improve the section we can use the I section instead of a rectangular uh, which will be capable enough to handle the load. Now, uh, this is something uh, which uh, you can see that it is mostly being used this kind of frame for the manufacturing uh, unit some of the factory then it is a very regular uh, arrangement. So, multiple frames are put in parallel and then that will be covered by some, some light material or sometimes maybe some translucent material. So, that you know they can maximize the daylight uses inside it and along with that we also have the bracing to protect the structure the frame from the lateral load. Now, these are another two pictures where you can see the this is something where it is under construction how this being made 
and it is something where it is very enclosed form. So, this portal frames the gable frames where the main difference is like you have a peak on top of it. So, this is also helpful. Now, come to the portal frames uh, like instead of the gable uh, now the portal frames that will have a very rectangular section. So, you can uh, identify the portal structural frames generally look like a door frame. Okay. So, it uh, can also create some uh, you know space. So, it is also being used in some commercial and industrial building where uh, the frames being used. So, in this case this is not made of steel this is just uh, with the concrete the shear wall kind of construction. So, this is just creating to uh, you know um, uh, underpass uh, to pass uh, this particular water or the canal they have. So, this kind of arrangement this kind of bridge sometimes we need the portal and if you uh, compare it with this steel uh, representative portal to this it is pretty similar and that will actually uh, uh, helping to make it. Sometimes you know this underpass being constructed not only to uh, you know pass this particular water body or canal or drainage sometimes even for the crossing of the pedestrian. So, when a highway or expressway is passing through. So, we have to create that particular uh, underpass. So, uh, that is also required some kind of uh, you know portal frames that can be used to uh, solve this purpose. Now, in this case also it is uh, another example of the portal uh, it is pretty similar to the earlier one and now it is made of steel. Now, coming to the advantages of uh, the frame structure. So, there are multiple advantages of frame structure. First of all compared to the load bearing structure now the thickness of wall can be maintained uniformly throughout. Uh, because like thickness of wall will not essentially uh, matter the load distribution because load will be taken care of by uh, the beam column and footing the walls are just to make the partition. So, that can be uh, there and it can be and as a result that can also be thinner compared to uh, your uh, load bearing structure and whenever you make your wall thinner then definitely there will be reduction in the dead load uh, the self weight the material weight uh, material self weight to the structure. Due to the simple geometry as because it is the connection Okay. and most commonly it is a very rectangular connection with the uh, you know beam and column. Sometimes it may go with some different geometry, but most commonly it is being very you know typical layout of your beam and column. Uh, so, uh, in this case the construction of frame structure is very speedy uh, and if you have uh, like uh, option to use the steel frame where it is something will act like uh, plug and play. So, it, even it will make it faster. The rigid uh, and stable frame structure could able to resist tremendous vertical load as well as the lateral wind loads during uh, like the heavy wind blow or maybe the seismic load that we discussed. Large unobstructed space can be created those span like where it was a limitation for a load bearing wall we cannot have larger span for any meeting place or maybe some huge gathering uh, with, with uh, like without exceptional uh, you know implementation of like those load bearing that we have in the Roman period uh, and all uh, which will have the very uh, high thickness or very large thickness of uh, your cross section. So, frame structure the utilization of space will be more. So, we can use the space uh, more the interior space can be more due to reduction of the cross section of the wall as well as your uh, column. Adaptable to almost any shape and can be used as because like when you go for the steel uh, thing. So, the uh, different kind of form can be generated as well as the concrete that to be uh, you know you know when uh, during the construction it will be in semi liquid form. So, whatever the form you would like to give with proper uh, you know design. So, that can easily go with any shape and uh, design. So, that is another advantage of the frame structure 
uh, what uh, like was missing during the load bearing where you have very limitation with the design and all. Then prefabrication is also possible, you can make those uh, column beam slab uh, um, like in manufacturing plant and then you bring to the site and just uh, uh, you know make the arrangement and you can make your construction very speedy and uh, it is basically the plug and play concept. Now come to the disadvantages of frame structure, so frame structure definitely uh, requires some expensive plant and machines because whenever you go for higher uh, height, so you need some other equipment machine to uh, bring uh, your material at upper story, so different cranes, different leaves, so already like those machineries are required which was not much required for the uh, um, your um, load bearing structure because of the low height like that can be managed with the minimal scaffolding, but in this case it will uh, be required uh, you know proper machinery to make your construction easy as well as you also need to procure a different kind of uh, uh, material. So, the uh, in this case like you have a constant supply of the material. Uh, as frame is an active structural element, any change in the structural element may dangerous for the safety. So, uh, in this case basically the uh, you can do alternation to the wall as because wall is uh, not carrying any effective load of the building, but any alternation to the beam and column will be dangerous. So, uh, that is why proper uh, you know um, care to be taken if at all we have to do something on the beam and column the concrete structure and that is why um, we all have experienced you know you know post construction whenever we make alternation we never uh, damage or uh, we just you know cut any uh, structural element the beam and column to that. The cost of construction is relatively higher uh, compared to the bearing structure, but uh, again if we just go have some limitation with the load bearing then effectively when you go for the high rise. So, this will not matter, but it is uh, when you go for a low rise structure then probably this will have the higher cost. Then the skill labor is also required to have the proper uh, finishing and in the case of normal reinforcement concrete the span length usually 40 feet. So, uh, the span of the beam can go up to 40 feet when it is a normally reinforced uh, a typical reinforced beam otherwise what will happen that it will have some lateral deflection. So, if you increase your span of your beam. So, then they will have some uh, your lateral reflection. So, in order to account that, so accordingly we have to other support. So, uh, instead of simply support we will go for your continuous beam column arrangement and you can uh, reinforce your structure in a much better way uh, to you know have the larger span or else instead of a simple beam column we can convert it to uh, like the arch and dome which will actually help to uh, you know enhance this particular span. Now, coming to the summary section of this frame structure, so basically in the frame structure is a combination of your uh, beam and column and slab. So, uh, they are being connected to each other. Uh, which will resist the axial load or the gravity load which is transferring uh, from your slab to beam and then beam to column and then column to your foundation and foundation to soil. So, that is your axial load that is acting um, you know vertically along with that this connection will also protect against the lateral load that is due to your wind or maybe during the movement or during the uh, your uh, vibration okay, uh, during uh, earthquake. And uh, at the same time also we have learned that uh, the you know type of the frame it may be of your fixed type joint uh, where the support is being given with the fixed uh, thing sometimes it may be your uh, pin joint. So, in pin joint also you have the similar, but 
uh, again it has some uh, you know advantages with the pin joint and also it is basically giving you the rigid uh, frame structure uh, to that. And then along with that also we discussed about the braced frame structure where along with your uh, beam column arrangement what we normally add the bracing. Another member and most commonly it will connect the beam and column diagonally to add some extra resistance which will protect from the lateral bending and uh, that we have seen earlier. Suppose we have a simple uh, connection and then we have uh, put the apply load. So, it will try to bend like this very easily, but if you just support either side of that, so it will enhance the resistance. In this also we have uh, learnt like the gable frame where uh, there is a peak. So, normally this kind of roof, the pitch roof being used and it is being used for uh, factory outlet or something. Uh, but uh, most importantly where the rainfall or the snowfall is a predominant thing. And along with that also we have discussed the portal frame. So, portal frame where, where it is having a rectangular section and that can be made of the steel or maybe RCC like underpass and all. And coming to the end of this what we discussed about the advantage. So, with the frame structure we can uh, actually increase the span compared to the load bearing and then we also can go with the height uh, and then your uh, flexibility with your internal arrangement the design. But the disadvantage again we cannot alter uh, the column. Uh, and other thing. For the load bearing structure may be some portion of the wall can be taken, but for this uh, like replacing beam and column will be a very critical job uh, like and it is dangerous too. And at the same time uh, there are some other thing like uh, this uh, uh, frame structure will require uh, more uh, machinery, more skill labor uh, compared to the frame structure uh, like compared to the uh, load bearing structure. So, this is all over with the frame structure and mostly like uh, with the frame structure we can go up to 40 story uh, building uh, uh, with the proper you know shear wall or some portion of that shear wall and we can enhance it even for the higher height with the structural bracing maybe single side like single direction or maybe with the double direction. Like that this is very important and the material used is RCC steel or sometimes composite which will help us to go for like utilizing the space the horizontal and vertical more effectively with the frame structure. So, this is all over the frame structure and I have shown few of the buildings, but most of the buildings in our day to day life in present day uh, is basically with the frame structure. There are exceptional thing where like you have the uh, use a large span where the horizontal uh, beam cannot hold beyond the 40 feet in general with the normal reinforcement we can move to the some arch structure and all. So, with that uh, I conclude here. So, these are some of the reading materials that already been given in earlier presentations also you can go through it. You can also go through the given uh, website uh, links so that you can get more information on that. With that I conclude here. So, next we will discuss about uh, the arch uh, structure, different kind of arches, different kind of you know uses of arch, their support and all in the next lecture. So, till then again I thank you to take part in this course.